Welcome to APOC 2023. We're here in the hustle and bustle of Gurugram, India. For the 23rd Asia-Pacific Optometric Conference. Where the latest developments in everything optometry is unfolding. We'll be networking with some of the top names in the industry. We'll be checking out some great sessions and meeting some really interesting speakers. And some great products as they make their way to the optometry market. So why don't you guys come and join us on our journey? Let's go! On our first day in Gurugram, an area located in the southern border of Delhi, known as Financial and Technology Hub, we went to reconnect with some familiar faces in the form of Dr. Rajiv Prasad, Vice President of APOC and TJ Wagner, CEO and co-owner of Wagner Diagnostics, who we had met last August at Cake and Pie Expo 2.0. We were immediately taken by the hospitality from both the beautiful venue and the charismatic characters of TJ and Dr. Prasad. We were invited for a delicious lunch nearby with Prasad's family and representatives from the conference. And even with our bellies full, Dr. Prasad was still kind enough to take a few minutes for Mice TV, where he highlighted optometry and the future of eye care and also shared a bit about his experience screening 500,000 people at Kumbh Mela, the largest congregation of pilgrims on earth. It was a challenge, but it was a wonderful experience. Believe me, uh, that congregation has actually showed how just a pair of glasses can give happiness. There are people who just can't see well, and uh, they also can't afford to go to eye care practitioners and get the services. So that was so touching and you know, we are so blessed to have good eyes and good vision. We can see well. There's a large number of people who's deprived of this good vision just because they don't have, a, they don't have money to pay for a pair of glasses. Or you know, they really cannot go from village to the city to get the services done. You can see the full interview with Dr. Prasad by following the link in the description below. We kicked off the next day with the opening ceremony, a tour around the booths and some time to mingle and meet all the folks who had made the journey to New Delhi. There was a great buzz of positivity and we immediately felt welcomed and like we'd already started making friends. We had some opening remarks from such distinguished guests as Mr. Santosh Gangawar, who is an Indian politician and former Minister of State, and Mr. Patanjali Nair, Medical Officer for Public Health at WHO, as well as from APOC representatives, Professor Kali Ram and Dr. Subodh Dixit. The opening ceremony was topped off by a traditional lamp lighting. The lighting of the lamp represents the removal of darkness and ignorance, whilst also symbolizing the abundance of prosperity and knowledge a fitting sentiment for the event we had in store. After more incredible Kannadi delights, we took a journey around the show floor to meet more friends and check some of the latest trends and innovations in optometry. First up was the Platinum sponsors Nikon, displaying their eLife Pro series, a portfolio of lenses that are tailored to suit the diverse lifestyles we lead today, including lenses specifically designed for outdoor activities, indoor living, and for maximizing near vision. Like they say, we're truly entering a new era of refraction. Next up was Nikon's partner company SLR showing off their range of myopia management products including their Stellis lenses, which help both correct and control the condition. And I had a bit of time to have my axial length measured with the Myopia Expert 700. It's great to see so many innovations helping in the fight against a condition which affects over 50% of the world population. We then stopped over at Hoya Vision Care, where it was my turn to have my eyes examined. Hoya also have an impressive range of myopia control solutions, including their award-winning Mio Smart lenses, which utilize defocus incorporated multiple segments technology, another top product in the fight against myopia. Rounding up the main sponsors was Takai Optical, who made their way from Japan. Their range of absorption glasses not only make for some stylish sunnies, but suppress glare and enhance contrast which can benefit users with retinal disorders and eyes implanted with intraocular lenses. Cool glasses and cool guys at the Tokai booth. Finally, there was the main expo hall with some highlights being Rumex International, an Indian medical technology company that had a huge range of optometry products on display. We took some time to check out a few of their latest gadgets. And of course, our friends at Wagner Diagnostics were busy throughout the show, demonstrating their computerized color vision test and how to use it in your optometry practice, as they gave away over 300 free test kits to attendees. A great sign of progression and generosity. 
We also had a chance to check out few of the sessions throughout the day, including the KB Wu Memorial Lecture in memory of Qiang Bai Wu, the founding father of ophthalmic optics in China and a huge influence throughout Asia Pacific. Dr. Akio Kanai, a prominent scientist and winner of the prestigious Nansen Refugee Award, an annual medal issued by the UN High Commission for Refugees, gave a talk about his work with Fuji Optical and their programs that have helped provide refugees with eye care throughout Asia. The session was moderated by Dr. Jessica Nouvel, clinical associate at the School of Optometry at Hong Kong Polytechnic, who also gave a talk later in the day about retinal vascular occlusions and the importance of treating the whole patient. There were certainly some eye-opening topics from some of the leaders in the fields. Later that day, Dr. Sabo Dixit, national president of the Indian Optometric Association, took time to talk to Mice TV about recent changes in healthcare policy in India. With the National Commissions for Allied and Healthcare Professions Bill passed in 2021, recognizing optometry as a healthcare profession, and here is what he had to say about it. So, first challenge is that our association wants the independent council as optometry council of India. The other challenge was that India is big country, and having so many nomenclatures of optometrist. We also had a chance to speak to Dr. Pitanjali Nair from the World Health Organization, who had some insightful words to share about integrating optometrists to eye care programs and making eye care programs an integral part of primary health care. Take the eye care to the people and do it from the people's requirement rather than the, from the program's requirement. So it brings about community, it brings about services, it talks about how do you manage the program and make it uh, people-centric. We need to integrate, first of all, the optometrists into the eye care programs and then bringing the eye care program into the primary health care. We need the optometry and the optometrists to be an integral part of the primary health care today, now. You can see the full interview with Dr. Dixit in the link in the description. And leave a comment if you have any suggestions for other key opinion leaders you would like to see Mice TV catch up with. After an action-packed day, we thought we had wrapped up when the affable Dr. Prasad handed us our vouchers and a warm invitation to the gala dinner. There was once again an incredible array of food from the subcontinent and around the world, highlighting the important place that food takes in Indian culture and hospitality. We of course had some speeches from our gracious hosts. And to our surprise, a few guests were invited to the stage and asked to say a few words. There were some wonderful heartfelt sentiments and visions of the future. And our very own Ruchi of Medium Ice had this to say. It's a great pleasure to be standing here and at Medium Ice we are trying to bridge the gap between optometry and ophthalmology. And we see APOC as a great podium to do that. And I think uh, APOC is doing great work to bring optometry to where it should be. And that's where we join hands and we plan to move together to take it to new hands. It truly was a welcoming, educational and entertaining day in Gurugram. And with plenty more to come, we couldn't fit it all into one video. So follow us on YouTube and social media for part two, where we'll be catching up with more incredible folks, learning more about all things eye care, and even getting off the show floor and onto the front lines of primary care. <laughs>